Tell me about your HBCU journey. Like what made you go to an HBCU? Who initially put the seed in your head? And, and then how was the journey? Yeah, well, you know, both of my parents are college graduates. Neither one of them attended an HBCU. So they made sure they told me, my sister, my brother, go to an HBCU. So I always knew that that was going to be the path. I just didn't know which one. So I settled in. Um, on Spelman. I thought, you know what, this is probably a great choice for me. I want to go to Spelman. Um, but I told you, you know, I was kind of rebellious when I was a child. So my parents ended up sending me to an all girls Catholic high school. Um, and after that experience, I did not want to go to Spelman. I was like, I cannot do all girls again. So Howard quickly became my first choice during my high school experience. And it helped because my sister was there. She's two years older than me. Um, and she was on the Ooh La La dance team. We went down to see her and the games and the band and the HBCU experience and the homecoming. It was just like, I'm sold. I want to come here. Um, but I was also a high school student that did what she had to do just to get by. Um, I consider myself to be relatively smart, so I didn't need to work hard to get a B or a C plus, right? So I would just kind of coast through, get my grades and move on. Um, so when I initially applied to Howard, I was rejected. I got a rejection letter. And um, in my mind at that time, I'm like, I think they made a mistake. <laughs> you know, so in my, my kind of obnoxious and entitled mind at, as a high school student, um, I made a call to the university. I'm like, I think you guys made a mistake. You mailed me <laughs> a rejection letter. And they were like, uh, very nicely, they responded and said, no, ma'am, uh, it was not a mistake. We have a competitive applicant pool and unfortunately you didn't meet the mark so i told them um it started to set in like okay well this is a problem um this is serious and uh what am i going to do so i asked if there was any alternative anything i could do to um enforce you know a reconsideration of some sort so they said you have one last recourse you can write us a letter advocate for your admission we'll review it and let you know and this was that whole attorney like spirit that I had in me. You know, I'm a natural advocate for myself and other people. I question everything. So I wrote the letter. It took me a few times to be like okay with it. Um, but I finally wrote it, sent it out. And then in two weeks later, I had an acceptance package on my doorstep from Howard. So I knew, I knew that this was going to be a special journey. Um, I've learned over the course of time that nothing that's worth it will be easy. Um, and, you know, just advocating for myself in that moment, it taught me so much. And uh, I was so excited to just get the journey started. So when I got to Howard, I, I jumped right in. I um, was active in a bunch of organizations. Um, I became the vice chair of Howard Homecoming. I was the community service chair of my state club. Um, I was initiated at Alpha Chapter Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, you know, so I was very active and involved on campus and it was the best decision I could have ever made in my life to advocate for myself at that moment because my um, high school counselors were encouraging, you know, University of Delaware, the state schools and, you know, the smaller institutions that were local. Not once did they ever mention an HBCU to me. So I'm grateful for my parents who encouraged me to go in that direction. Um, and, you know, the rest is, is history because but for, you know, me advocating and getting that acceptance and, and going to Howard, I don't know if HBCU Week would have ever been born.